How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews back with... Well, it's an unboxing. But it's not an unboxing. It's more of a product review. I don't do these. This is not my shtick. Um, I've done a couple kind of product reviews in the past. Uh, one was this bottle opener. Uh, Forgeworks bottle opener I dug quite a bit. Um, I did this because uh, the owner of this company reached out and I thought they were cool and I wanted one. Um, <laughs> and same thing pretty much happened. I got I did a growler trail keg, which was a pressurized growler. Um, and this is probably the only, I think this might be the only third one um, that I've done. And this is Tavor for those that didn't read the title. Um, Tavor is a beer mail service. Um, I have never used them before. I've always found them intriguing. Um, but I've never used them just because I kind of, I have a decent access to a lot, large swath of beers from around the country. It's, you know, and, you know, brewery send me beer, fewer send me beer, stuff like that. So I never felt personally the need, um, to do that. Now that kind of changed, um, right about a year ago when the pandemic really hit. And I was like, okay, I was like, you know, maybe I'll, I'll use one of these services and Tavor kind of came to mind. Uh, to the point where I actually reached out to the company, not asking for beer, but I actually just asked them for me a marketing material so I could do some research on the company to see what they're about and uh, all the stuff they do. And I was going to do like a short piece on like, you know, uh, existing in the beer world during a pandemic when you can't really go to breweries. Um, that didn't happen because this dude can be lazy. Um, not really. I just got so busy. I just couldn't do it. Um, and I just kind of, I, I forgot about it. You know, it was probably around like June of last year. So we're talking about, we're at the end of March, 2021. And I was like, okay. And then, um, and then my buddy, Mike from Jersey, uh, he actually wrote me and said, Hey man, love to send you some beers. Can I do that? I said, hell yeah, that would be pretty awesome. He said, great. And then right before the box came, he said, just so you know, it's coming from Devor. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. I can kind of do it. Then he can send it to me and I can kind of go over the service a little bit. Literally the day he wrote me about that, Devor reached out and they're like, hey, we'd like to send you some beers. And I said, you know what? I will do that. I will, I will accept your free beers, damn it. Um, and, uh, and I told him, I was like, you know what? I'm like, I wanted to kind of do a piece and, and getting beer during the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of worked out. Um, so I got to get Mike's box in. So technically this is my second Tavor box that, uh, came in. I didn't do any of the kind of stuff that I want to do with this one, which is kind of talk about the service and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, just open that box as a regular beer mail. But this one, as you can see, I'm not doing my live stream. This is more, uh, something I want to record and make sure I edit it properly. I, which means cut the beginning, cut the end. Basically, I want it to look good. Uh, my live streams look like poop because my internet sucks. Anyway, Tavor. So we reached out. They said, hey, we'll send some beers off. First things first. They said, hey, man, we like what you do. I don't know if they like what I do. I am maybe, I assume I just have enough followers on Instagram and whatever that they are just like, hey, this person might talk about our stuff. I don't know. Um, I was, But I was still flattered as I always am. And, uh, and they're like, we'd like to send you out some beers. And there really wasn't much else to it. Um, he was like, just let me know if you're up for it. You know, you can do whatever you want to do with it and go from there. That's the way you do it, people. That's the way you do it. Um, there's a lot of beer companies, breweries, stuff like that, that reach out with almost like ultimatums. Is really kind of just it irks me. When that happens, you know, I understand that, you know, there, there's the influence influencer world. Uh, I don't think I live in that world. Some people say maybe I do, maybe I don't. But a lot, um, some beer companies, for example, I'll name names. I don't give a shit. So, um, uh, so Toppling Goliath. Um, what? No, no, no. It wasn't Toppling Goliath. Sorry, guys. I'm messing with you. It was Lawson's. Lawson's. And this is not Lawson's fault. Uh, but uh, literally almost the same day that Tavor reached out to me and said, hey, man, we love sending you beers. If you want to talk about it, great. Give us your information. Here's the little Google Sheets to fill out with all the information we need. Done. That's the conversation. The email I get is from a marketing firm representing um, Lawson's Finest, and it's and, and it's the worst. It's, it's, the, uh, it's like, okay, we want to send you three six-packs of Little Sip of Sunshine, 
if you agree to these terms, we will send it to you. Uh, you have to make five Instagram posts, three Instagram stories. You have to mention it this way. Use these hashtags, blah, 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 blah. And if we do that, then we'll send you three six packs and you'll get a cup and a koozie and a glass and blah, 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 blah. I didn't even answer that. Um, I hate that. I can't stand for that. Maybe it's just something about me. But then again, I'm sitting here talking about this company. So I'm just a weird dude. So anyway, they wrote out and did it the right way. And I was like, I'll do it. So they sent it off. And uh, that was pretty much it as far as our exchange went. Um, and I've been waiting on this um, for, I think it's been 12 days. Um, so let's jump into that. So the service in and of itself, explain it real quick because I'm not trying to really kind of advertise services, give you my thoughts on what I'm doing. So basically what you typically do for this, they don't just send you free beer in the mail. Um, you, get, you log on their website. You have to pretty much use your app, I believe. And every day they release a certain amount of beers. Like they'll put up, oh, we have these beers today. And then you take them and be like, I want two of these. I want one of those. I want two of these. And then when you start that, like when you click, I want four of these, it starts a clock, which means you have four to five weeks to fill a box up as much as you want. That's probably the coolest part of the deal, but also kind of like the smartest marketing idea of the deal, which is um, in four to five weeks, they are going to ship your box. So if you pick, I, I want one of these and never get anything else. So you picked, I want this $4 beer. They will send it to you in four to, f four to five weeks and they will charge you fi basically $15 shipping. It's like 14 and change or something like that. But then you add taxes, gets closer to 16. You know what I'm talking about. Um, or you could buy like a ton of beer and it's the same amount for shipping. So it's a flat rate shipping. It rotates. And this is for their basic service. I believe there's a subscription service to where you don't pay for shipping, but then that's like you're getting beer every month, regardless of what you do. They're shipping you a box guaranteed, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Um, and um, cause I can only speak to this and what I've gotten. I'm not part of that. I could have done research, but I just had a baby anyway. Um, so that's cool from a certain extent because, you know, $15 shipping, it's pretty cheap. You know, I, you know, I just sent out, um, I sent out four beer mails today. I don't do a lot of beer mails, but I sent some out to some beer tubers who want to do some kind of joint beer mails. I sent out a, a 750 or no 500 milliliter bottle and basically two cans with that. And I, I paid $18 a piece to ship that. Um, so it's, you know, it's cost effective, um, from that standpoint. So that's pretty cool. It's also very smart because what that does is gives you digital FOMO. Uh, you know, before the pandemic, we we're all seeing these releases online. Um, be here tomorrow. People line up. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, fear of missing out builds up. Boom. You know what I mean? Like you, you stand in line, you buy a bunch of beer. It's a kind of a softer version of that. And that, that they're releasing stuff online. You'd be like, okay, well, I have a box coming. What do I want? What do I want? So it's a little bit different, but the same thing. So I, I'm sure it generates a little bit more income having that rotational kind of four to five week period of, oh, box is going to come, box is going to come. I might as well maximize the amount of beers that come in there to basically make it worth it for me to purchase this service. Um, so you're talking basically, basically you're paying $15 fee for shipping and then whatever the beers cost. Now, the one thing that I won't know for sure is the pricing on all these. That would take me researching every single one of the beers that are in here. I don't know what they've sent. I don't know how many beers they've sent and try to crack down how much these beers cost at the brewery and then basically try to find out what they originally cost in Tavor and then, you know, kind of go back and forth and figure out the percentage difference on cost in these beers. Rather than do that, I just picked a bunch of beers at random that I had on their site for available today and then looked up previous articles on on this for people who actually did that research and found out the average beer cost here is one to two dollars more than the beer cost locally. Um, I don't one thing I don't know about that. I don't know if that's single prices or if it's four pack prices like I would see, you know, someone quote a beer to be like four fifty. Or four, no, I think it's single price. No, I think it's four pack prices, which makes it even nicer. Because I saw a couple of people do a couple of beers that I know I can get around here and I know how much they cost. And when they quoted the pricing, it was for a four pack. And if you cracked one off the four pack, it was like that. So it's about one to $2 per beer more expensive. Not going to lie to you. That's not bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought it was going to be a little bit more expensive. I'm sure there's outliers. I'm sure there's ones that are a little bit cheaper. I'm sure there are ones that are quite a bit more expensive. Um, but if you factor in, you know what I mean? 
driving, you know, gas, time, all that kind of stuff. Shipping being as cheap as it is. Sure, you're not going to the place you want to buy the beer and buying the exact beer you want. You're buying the beer that is given to you online from them and who chooses to use their service, which seems to be a large swath of people. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't seem like that bad of a deal. Um, um, so like I said, it'll, it'll, it'll take a little bit for me to figure out what the pricing is because what I did, and I made sure I did this is that on Mike's box and I'll probably do it with this one too. Um, at the end of my videos, hopefully people are still tuning in. I asked Mike how much he paid for it because there was no pricing on the sheet that was in the box from him. How much he paid for the beer and how much anybody who lives in that locale, how much they paid for it to try to get an idea of the cost difference. So, you know, shipping's pretty, pretty cheap. Uh, the beers don't seem overtly expensive once you factor in, you know, a buck a can, but then, or a buck, yeah, about a buck a can or bottle. A bucket or two, a can or bottle, and then you're not going anywhere. You're doing all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. Not too shabby. So, yeah. Other than that, I'm trying to think about anything else in service. Like I said, they put beers up a day, a couple, you know, whatever, two to four different cans of bottles a day. You, you say, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then until it's sold out, next day more go up. There's still some from the previous day up. They stay up there, and you say, oh, I can get some more of those, more of those, blah, blah, blah. Till you put how much you want together, and they ship it to you. I, I don't know if there's a limit to how much. I, I, I don't know if you get 9,000 bottles in a month, and they're still to charge you $15. I'm sure they have some kind of algorithm in place that makes that possible that they still make profit off of that. Um, it's obviously a volume game for them, not an individual markup game here. I didn't see anything overtly like price gouging as far as what they do when it comes to beers. Um, it's it's a first come first serve basis, which is always nice because there's no bitch or moaning. You miss out, you miss out. Um, what else is he gonna say? Uh, the shipping thing, fifteen bucks is super cheap. I'm sure they have some kind of agreement with um, with whatever shipping companies they use. I think they use two or three different shipping companies for the whole process. We'll get to that during the unboxing because I got some thoughts on that. And they probably have some kind of awesome agreement to be like, we'll ship this amount of stuff a day, a week, a month, and then just get killer rates. Like the company I work for, I do logistics for them. Um, par partial, partially do logistics for them. And we get those kind of deals. We get 80% off parcel and stuff like that because we move so much product. So that's why they're getting such a break on costs and stuff like that. So let's do this. Let's actually start breaking into this box and we'll start talking about it. First thing I wanted to talk about, and I saw, noticed this in Mike's uh, box is that, and as someone, and this is going to sound like a joke, but I'm not joking. As someone who deals with cardboard, like I, I, I deal with cardboard in the company I work for. And by that, I mean, like I have to make sure stuff leaves our company, comes into our company and leaves our company intact cardboard is like super underrated when it comes to a shipping medium and the reason why i bring this up is because when i open this up um you're gonna notice there's really not any padding other than cardboard on this and uh if you use a really well uh done uh cardboard it's gonna you don't have to worry about all the crazy kind of things you typically need to do when it comes to shipping beer that a lot of people are like you know oh Oh, you didn't pack it well enough. Now, I was going to show you this up here. Um, I guess I could tip it on its side and show you guys. There we go. Let's do that. Okay. First thing you want to do is here. Okay. This is their special delivery instructions. And I want to speak to this specifically because this is where I think they're using two to three different like, kind of logistics companies to get this box in my house. First things first. They shipped it. Um, I forget what day they shipped it. But they shipped it. And there. Let me look this up so I don't get this wrong. How long are the beers going to get to me kind of thing? I believe for the East Coast, because I am almost... Po okay, here we go. Seven to eight business days on the East Coast, they said, is approximately how long it'll take. So when you say approximately seven to eight business days, I'm saying five to ten business days. Some might get it quicker, might get it later. They, it took it 12 days to get here. So it's quite a bit longer um, than what they said. So keep that in mind. It could have been a glitch in the system. Um, you know, when, um, Mike sent his box, he said, you're going to, it says you're going to receive it on the 12th. When I got this originally, it said it was going to be delivered like five days earlier, but then it just got stuck and, and paused and paused and, and, and just didn't move for a while and then went all over the place and then eventually got delivered. 
So keep that in mind. It might take a little bit longer, but I'll look, give them a pass on that uh, because they probably have nothing to do with it. It has to do with the logistics company. Now, here's the special delivery instructions. It says this package contains alcohol and adult signatures are required. Receipt um, uh, has to be 21 years or older. Um, do not deliver to intoxicated person. No signature um, releases. Um, again, this is on is not on Tavor. This box was delivered to my house at 7 a.m. with no signature. <laughs> now, there's a bunch of people where I live, which I'm not going to mention just because I don't want to pinpoint the delivery service that they use to deliver this because I know for a fact it's not the same place in every state. You can find out where I live pretty easy. <laughs> um, I like the fact that I didn't have to wake up at 7 a.m. and sign for this goddamn thing. I live in the middle of nowhere. Like the middle of no. I live in a farm in the middle of nowhere. No one is stealing packages off my porch you can't see my porch i have a porch you know what i mean i have a you know what i mean like no one can see the package on my porch let alone have the balls to walk the quarter mile to m my porch to steal things so it, in my area it could be just that to where they're like no you, we don't need this stuff out. you need it but you don't need this stuff out where i live um it's not needed but i gotta mention it that you know it got delivered without a signature so if they're watching you know just so you know um, you know who you shipped my box. So, there you go. Second, cardboard, like I said. Ultra, ultra sexy cardboard on a sucker. Like, this is like high test stuff. We don't even uh, do this stuff. So, we'll see what's going on here. They pack these things pretty funly. And then we'll see what's what. So, we got a little, little, um, little note here. It says, you've been gifted a box. Each beer in this box is certified independent from unique craft breweries around the world. Enjoy. We can't wait uh, for you to crack in your first craft brew. Cheers. Uh, welcome to Tavor. You're now sporting over 600 independent breweries across the U.S. that share their beer and Tavor craft beer delivery app. Um, you're also a part of a community of beer triggers. And it just talks about their app and how you can download and stuff like that. So there you go. Uh, fun little... Uh, I wonder if that... I think that might be... Um, maybe that's kind of the, the note if you want to do your own note on these things. I assume that's what this is down here. Um, what was I going to say? Hmm. I was going to say something. I don't remember. Oh, this reminded me about being a support over uh, craft breweries all over the place. I know for a fact that they use um, the app. I, you can go in a store online, um, like on a regular web browser, but they, they pretty much make you do the peer purchasing via the app. I think the reasoning behind that is because they don't want you, anything to show up on your thing locally. So their whole point is they want to push beer to new markets. Um, it's probably one of the reasons why they get like a subtle, they, I'm assuming they get subtle discounts, um, or decent discounts from breweries to sell their beers because one, they're moving a ton of beer Two, they're getting their name out there and promoting them. So it's almost like paying a promotion company to promote your, your beer. They do it in a timely and quick fashion. So they know the kind of prominence of the beer is not sitting around waiting around doing all that kind of stuff. But, um, I always thought that was weird. I, I, I kind of hoped there would be a way to kind of tick a box and like be like, I don't want just the stuff that's not around me because it, it specifically doesn't show you beer that is like down the street from you. I would like that option sometimes, you know what I mean? And be like, ah, I like, I love that beer. I'd take some of that too. So I don't know why they wouldn't do that. Um, I looked at the app briefly. There was no option to change that kind of setting. So if there is, I'm sorry I missed it. Mm. So there's that. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if this is going to be all bottle or cans. Um, it just, it, 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 you don't need great packaging when it comes to shipping beer. You just have to make sure stuff doesn't move around a ton, which that's the case here. And really thick, durable cardboard. And you're pretty much good to go. I always align my boxes with plastic just in case something leaks. But that's more if something leaks than... Um, something leaks than um, it's going to get returned to sender, whereas... I don't think that would happen. They probably ship, still deliver it here because, you know, not to be too weird, but, you know, most often than not when people are shipping beer um, as a beer drinker and as opposed to a company, you know, you're kind of doing it on the DL. You're not seeing it beer and stuff like that. So you're trying to hide the fact that there's liquid in there. So let's go through these beers and see a couple different things. What they've sent, because it still is a beer unboxing. And also, I want to see dates on these suckers. So we have Enchanted Island. That's Imperial Tiki Sour Ale. Coming from Humble Forger. I've heard of them, actually. Uh, Humble Forger. Um, it says, This painkiller-inspired Imperial Sour Ale is loaded with fresh pineapple and orange juices. 
Okay, uh, fair enough. Um, Humble Forger, uh, they're out of Wan Wan Wanaki, Wisconsin. So, yeah. Like I say, I love the label. A little Bob Ross action. But, um, yeah. I should have told them I drink only 5% lager. Um, <laughs> Strawberry Shake India Pale from Westbrook. We've had a bunch of stuff from Westbrook. Um, uh, yeah, 7% alcohol by volume. And, dude, 224. So this is just a hair under a month old. Um, this is um, from 3 to, so it's under a month old. So we're off to a good start here as far as dating goes. Um, we have Rondi Brew from uh, Anchorage. Okay, Anchorage Brew Company. India Pale Ale. Um, 6.4%. That's what I dig. 2.19. So I'm a little over a month old on that one. I'm not, I'm not heating this dating on this, to be perfectly honest with you. Energy City. I've had, um, some of these guys before. They're out of Chicago, I believe, or Chicago, local. Yeah, Istakal, Illinois. Um, uh, Energy City is Bistro Grandy. Ap apple and Cranberry Crumble flavored Berliner style vice. There's no date in this can. It's a Berliner. Even if it's a month or two old, I'm not going to get too peeved at it. Um, I would like to see the ABVs go down in this box. I should have told them I like low ABV stuff. Great Notion. Everybody loves the little Great Notion. Double Berry Shake. Okay. 9% alcohol by volume tart with um, Marion Berry and vanilla flavor. A lot of sour, tart, fruity stuff. Which I'm not going to sit here and say I, don't, I hate, but I'm not going to say I love it either. <laughs> I like one or two. It seems like almost all of these so far, like every one but one. Untitled Art, which I've had some stuff in them. Um, Nonstop Dry Hopped IPA. Double India Pala with Mosaic Sabro and Lotus Hops. I like Lotus Hops. 8.5%. 8, 8 this is two weeks old. So the one thing, and I noticed this on Mike's box, the one thing is our dating is pretty good on this. Um, Juicy Bits uh, from Weldworks. We actually... Is this a variant? No. This is just Juicy Bits. We get this locally to me. Um, Distribution-wise, I believe Weldworks just landed, I want to say, God, I don't know if it's in New Jersey. I think it is. Um, but I know it's in PA also, probably over the past month or two. Um, this is less than a month old. Um, and I've reviewed this before. So that's a pleasure beer. Um, a non-review beer. Uh, ooh, 12 ounce cans. Now we're getting fun. Green is gold. Lemon tonic cider told you no cider <laughs> um they um which is fine um actually you know who i'm gonna have drink this i'm gonna have my wife drink this she will love this i will i will review it but have her drink it a relatively fresh they actually said what do you want we can send you this this and this and this or we can send you a stout or a cider and i'm like everything but cider i'm like i don't drink cider uh you know got a knock on that one um, but uh, I gotta get back to this. Uh, this actually sounds like right up her alley. It's a lemon and gym botanical, six point nine percent lemon tonic cider. That she loves cider and she loves gin and tonics. This is I gotta, I gotta, yeah. KCBC. I could drive to this place in about an hour, um, <laughs> but I love them, so I don't mind it. Mexican style Vienna Lager. See now, I know they probably threw that in there as the one be like, just throw that lager in there. He won't notice. Be like, no, this is the shit I. Want. Like I should have asked for it. <laughs> oh, I'm the worst. Um, oh, I had, yeah, Chopping Wood. Czech style Pilsner. I had beer from this company. I, I, Mike sent me that box. I don't know if this was in there. I know, I think there was something else from these guys in there, but that's pretty cool. So a little Czech Pilsner action, which I will be excited to drink. Too Far Juice. Fair State Co-op. Oh, okay, it's a collab between Fair State Co-op and Drecker. Um, we've pushed the juice too far this time. Extra thick, fruited, sour, blackberry, plum, lactose, and marshmallow collaboration with Drecker. Yeah, kind of makes sense with Drecker. Um, I don't see an ABV. It's probably huge. I should have said no. I should have said no fruited Berliners. <laughs> okay. Odd 13 Brewing. I've heard of these guys before. I know I've had Odd 13, but I don't remember what. Uh, hazelnut uppercut. A stout with hazelnut and chocolate. 8.7. Hop Eureka. They call out malts. Oh, is this... Wait. Okay, never mind. I was going to be like, wait, is this a core four beer? But they actually say it's out with hazelnut. So but it's only hazelnut and chocolate with a bunch of oats and, a, and Eureka hops. So I'm kind of excited for that, to be perfectly honest with you. 
This little, this little guy up right there. Okay, what else do we got going on here? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Hellas. 4.8% low and slow Hellas Golden Lager. From Westbrook. Yeah. I would say they... Uh, I would say they know who I am, but they don't know. I'm not saying they don't... Didn't watch a, a video just to be like, oh, okay, let's some, send them some stuff. But I doubt they know that I love that stuff so much. Ooh. See, now we're getting into Daddy Likey territory. But this could also be the um, a hard seltzer. Pixie Mix, Untitled Art, Hard Seltzer. Orange Lavish Splash. I'm not going to review this. I'll drink it, though. Actually, that's for my wife, too. I think I said no seltzer, too. No seltzer, no cider. Um, Wild Berry Cider Co. So there's two ciders in here. Dry Hazy Cider. And I think that'd be it. That's a cool little box. It's not a bad service. I stopped I stopped checking dates on these because I assume they're all... I think they probably have a policy. You can't send anything over a certain period of time. 210. 222. You know, it looks like maybe their cutoff is a month and a half for what they sent off and um you know the only thing i'm kind of disappointed at is it didn't send a price list i should have asked for one of those specifically um only just to kind of give you know i know what the kcbc's go for um you know i know what the westbrooks go for but it's going to be uh, interesting to kind of go through all these so um and without that pricing information it's hard for me to sit here and say, is this something I'm into? Is this something I would do? Is this something I would dig? Would I ever do this? Probably. You know what I mean? Depending on on what their you know, what their pricing was at specific levels of beer. Um, you know, this is again for me, um, this is kinda how I enjoy drinking beer, which is singles. So it appeals to me in that extent because, you know, doing the beer reviews, I, I, I like singles, but I also like buying four packs of low ABV beer, you know? And not that you can't buy four um, of each one of these beers and get yourself some four packs, unless there's, um, you know, I assume they set limits to what you could buy on specific beers. But this is kind of what I'm sent already. This is like, you know, this is very much a box I would receive. Like this exact right here is very similar to a large box of beer I would receive from somebody. The only difference is the locations of all these breweries vary quite a bit. Uh, you know, they're not all from, um, you know, one area of the country. They're from all over the place. You know, you have Untitled Art from the Midwest. You have KCBC from New York. You know what I mean? You have breweries that are kind of all over the place. Um, and, uh... And that's the only difference. So it's like, it, it, it. let's put it this way. With the shipping in mind um, being relatively cheap. So $15 to ship this box is very, 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 very cheap. Um, you know, if this came in at a decent price point, let's say these for the sake of conversations are five fifty dollars again. You know, I'm guessing we're kind of in ballpark for that. You're talking about, what's it, four and four, so eight and th Eight, eight, 16 beers at 550 a can you know so what does that end up coming close to the, like 80 bucks um you know um 70 75 probably around 75 bucks plus shipping you know you're talking about another 16 bucks for the sake of being round here um let's go 90 let's say this was a 90 dollar box of beer I guess that's all right. You know, $90 for a half case of beer. You know. It's not too shabby. It's more than a half case, right? Yeah, it's three quarters of a case. Yeah, that's not too bad of crap beer. So, and it seems like the selection is quite nice. I mean, a lot of people geek out over, you know, a Great Notion. I know Weldworks gets a bunch of, um, um, gets a bunch of, actually, these guys are from Colorado. I'm not from Illinois, are they? Who am I confusing them with? They're from Illinois, right? Oh, I was thinking about the other the other brewery, right? No, that's the one I'm thinking of. Where the hell are these guys out of again? Yeah, Colorado. What's the other one I read? I was like, oh, I know these guys. They're from Illinois. Energy City. That was the one in there. It's called Baby Brain. It's what happens when you have a baby. So, man, you know, I mean, so let's recap. Um, I do these with no script. I do these with no practice. Um, so, you know, as far as the service goes, as far as what I've experienced, seems like shipping might take a little bit longer than they expect. That could be an anomaly. 
Um, you know, if you're a stickler for the law, um, you know, they, they dropped it off without a signature. I know that's, you know, a lot of people prefer that. I prefer that. I love it. Um, when you have a parcel server, a pers person who knows what you do and knows you get a lot of beer and knows that it's okay to drop it at your front door. So they're really cool about it. So you don't need a signature. Not saying that happens to me. Um, but that's more of a critique for, uh, Tavor, if they watch this, just to be like, you know, I know they have to cross their T's up their eyes. Now, if all of a sudden all the people in the, my area who buy Tavor start um, getting kind of um, not getting their packages because they're not home and the delivery driver who used to leave it now requires a signature, sorry, sorry, I screwed up your game. Um, I, I, I'm sure things break um, in these shipments, but I would be a I mean, I'm sure they're few and far between. I'm sure there's special um, arrangements they have with the shippers that they use um, to kind of reduce kind of breakage. Um, but obviously they're creating packaging for the sole purpose of shipping beer. And it seems like it's packaged really well. Again, if you're buying just all bottles, I'm kind of curious to see what kind of extra measures they would take as opposed to all cans. Um, but that's not too bad. And the price doesn't seem too shabby. So, you know, in a pandemic world, um, which it's not over everybody, uh, even though you might think it is, um, in a pandemic world, it kind of makes sense. These kind of things make sense and it might be the way of the future, you know, especially for getting beers from people, um, uh, and breweries from farther distances than you typically travel. Um, I, it, it seems like a, de a good service. Um, I might have to just do my own independent thing, buy, a, buy a lot, put a box together and see how that one goes as opposed to one that was sent to me. Um, and see how it works. But like I said, at the beginning of the pandemic, this, I was kind of going to do a video on this, um, just out of curiosity. Um, and a year in, uh, we're still in the same universe. So until breweries open and lines are back and, and, and morning shares are back together and stuff like that, this is a very viable option for getting beer that you normally otherwise wouldn't. Uh, so in that and of itself, I think it's not too shabby. Um, you know, for someone like me that really does enjoy the, 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 I really enjoy driving to a brewery and talking to the brewers and the owners and the people at the brewery and sitting down and walking into a brewery for the first time and just sit in the corner and just people watch and, and drink a lager and just kind of experience not just the beer, but the brewery itself and how they, uh, how they function and all those kind of things. That's why, why I do a lot of this is just, it's fun to fun to exist in that world. Um, so this might be a little bit counterproductive to that, but when you're in these kind of times, when it is a uh, it is a weird world, I don't think it's too poopy. I want to talk to you guys. You guys talk to me. I'm sure a bunch of you guys out there have used Tavor before. Tell me your experiences. Tell me what you think of the service. Have you used it? Has it always been good? Have you been using it a long time? How have the price has been for you based off of what you know? Um, have you ever gotten anything crazy from them? Have they ever screwed up royally? Um, those kind of things. Cause it'd be interesting to get feedback from a lot of people who've used this service. Like I said, I know people use it. I know people, someone sent me a box that watches the channel. There's people that use the service. They're pretty much, they're not the only name in the game, but they're the most prominent name in the game. So it'd be interesting to see what you guys think of it and see if it's something that one, you used it, used pre pandemic Two, did you start using it because of the pandemic and three, if you did start using it because of the pandemic, do you think you'll keep using it after everything's back safe and safe and sound and everybody gets their vaccinations, which just for those keeping sore at home, I got my second shot of Pfizer a couple days ago. So I will be back out and about it. I gotta wait till the little kiddo gets a little bit older. Don't want to be dragging anything back non COVID for that duder, but looks like the summer's shaping up for me to go back to breweries. Anyway, so there you go. That's a little bit of kind of a, a, a preface of what Tavor is about. Um, the kind of uh, kind of practices um, they run, how the how the app works, uh, and the beers they send out. I'm going to tell you right now. The most impressive the impressive thing about it is the dating. Um, you know, I thought these beers might be a little bit older to get a box of beers like this and have the oldest ones be a month and a half old. I don't think that is an issue whatsoever. Um, the least impressive thing is the fact that they sent me seltzer and cider when I specifically told them not to. I didn't say, hey, thank you for sending me a box. You better not throw some seltzer and cider in there. They said, hey, what would you like us to send you? Please tell us specifically. And I said, anything but seltzer and cider. And they sent me seltzer and cider. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of joking. 
I don't really care because it's stuff my wife will drink. So, yeah. So there you go. What do you think? Um, do you use it? Will you use it? If you want to use it, I have a promo code. I'll put it in the description. It's cool. I guess what the, if you guys can guess what the promo code is. How you doing, YouTube? <laughs> it actually is. That's the fucking, and I think that gets you ten bucks off. So I, I asked. They said you don't have to use it. I'm like, yeah, I'll get one because if one of you guys end up using it, at least you get ten bucks off. How you doing, YouTube? And that's doing with an N, not a G. Doing YouTube, you know, you know how I roll. So let me know if you guys use it. Let me know if you're in, in, enticed by this to use it. If you do use it, awesome. If you do use it and it's great, let me know. If you do use it and it sucks, let me know. Otherwise, there you go. So you're gonna be seeing a bunch of these reviews. I am not beholden to any of these um, to review. Uh, so I might drink some of them, which means I might drink all of the lagers and pilsner and just review the Berliners. Who knows? So hopefully, guys, enjoyed this little product unboxing thingy um hopefully you join me doing some beers let me know what you think of these beers if you had them before well, see you next time cheers guys